<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. It's uh, really great to be here. I'm uh, Ellen Cruz. And um, what I'm going to do this morning for my talk um, is I'm going to actually be using the slideshow. So I'll bring it up and I'll, sh I'll share my screen. Let me just bring it up here first. I'll share my screen. And then if you want to keep if you want to keep the videos on too, so that you can see me as well, that's great. So you get the full mix. Let me know if you can see that. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Yes. All right. Did I bring up the right one. Okay. Yep. It's good. So um, I am an associate member of the Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor. I just joined in um, 2019, and uh, basically this is my story. So who am I? I was born in 1964 and raised in Thunder Bay, Ontario. I was actually born in Fort William, for those of you who know the area. We were Port Arthur and Fort William and amalgamated in the 70s. And I am an avid outdoors woman and have been for most of my life. I don't know if avid is the right adjective. I'm, I'm a, uh, a medium at, a outdoors woman, as much as I could do for this area. Um, I worked in the grain industry and then I moved on to the forest industry 19 years ago and that's where I've been for the bulk of my working career and I am still working in the forest industry. I'm the uh, shipping supervisor for um, a local sawmill here in town and it's a it's a big job, it's a busy job, it's full time and it takes up you know the, uh, the bulk of my time. For, so for me at this point uh, my painting is my hobby. Um, I'm very happily married and I have raised a beautiful blended family of five children. And I mention that because they become, um, they are a big part of what inspires me with my painting. Uh, I presently enjoy many outdoor activities and the beauty of Northwestern Ontario and Lake Superior. So this is just a little taste of Thunder Bay and the activities that I like to enjoy when I'm not painting. I do spend much of my uh, extra time sitting at my desk painting, but when I'm not, I'm trying to get exercise. This uh, picture here was just taken a couple years ago and I'm going uphill and uh, I'm working a lot harder than the picture that's on. This was actually just taken last winter. We went out to Big White and enjoyed beautiful British Columbia interior mountain skiing. And I uh, love to golf. I do a lot of golf and my husband and I golf together. It's something, actually all of these activities pretty much we do together, um, my husband and I. Um, but the one activity I haven't shown is my, is sailboat racing or sailboating. So we, I have been a sailor since I was eight. Uh, I start, learned how to sail at the age of 18. I owned a boat from the age of 24 on. Sailed in inland lakes up here in the north and then uh, when I met and married my present husband, uh, we um, bought a keelboat for Lake Superior and didn't turn back. So we did about 15 years of keelboat sailing together. And we did sell the boat about eight, eight years ago because life changed and you'll see that as I go on. But um, the boating was, is a big motivator for me in my, in my desire to paint and what I want to paint, my subjects. And I also have a wealth of photos from all those years. I wasn't using my artistic talents to do any drawing or painting. So I used photography. So I have um, a wonderful reference library of beautiful shots on Lake Superior from our boat that, that um, I'm able to use for my paintings as I go forward. <clears throat> so this was my clan about 26 years ago. They all grew up. This is just one of five wedding shots, but this is everybody all grown up. They all got married. And then you know what happens when kids get married. <laughs> Not always, but often along come the babies. Well, then there's more babies. And this is present day. So I have 11 grandchildren. So again, I show you these because they are a big part of my heart and my motivation and my subjects, my subject for painting. Um, I just have to move this out of the way so I can read that. So a passion that has been, this is, I don't know if this is my artist statement, but this was what I wrote when I first um, created my Ellen Cruz art page. It's a Facebook page and it's just a place where I'm able to put my paintings. So if you want to check that out later, you can, but uh, you'll see them all here anyway. So um, 
anyway, so I guess it kind of is a little bit of an artist statement. So a passion that has been waiting for opportunity. In 2017, at the age of 53, I decided to work with my artist talents and try watercolor painting with some basic technique lessons from my friend and a fellow locus artist, local artist by the name of Janice Bonish. I was off and running. I hope you enjoy each painting, or sorry, each painting. Yeah, I hope you enjoy. Each painting contains inspiration and desire to show the love in my heart on the paper through each and every stroke. I believe painting is spiritual and I invite God into the process and I see him or her in the results. Take your time as each painting is hours of work and love. So my influences. Uh, so I'll skip through here pretty quick, but it is a big part of who I am. Um, so growing up, I just want to turn on the right page here. So uh, growing up, my um, my aunt and uncle in Montreal, so my father's um, sister and her husband. Um, Tom and Ruth Daly lived in Montreal and their house they so the Daly family was an affluent family from Napanee Ontario and their roots uh, their um, Tom's parents were actually um, uh, uh, friends and in um, uh, what's the right word for back then because it was in the early 1900s but they were in um, social circles with many of the um, um, painters of that day, including many of the painters from the group of seven and some of our starting members of this group, this Canadian Society of Painters in Watercolor. As a matter of fact, Marlene, when you did your fireside chat, I was all ears and a sponge, just listening to you know, the, the history that you had to share um, with, uh, with the artists who started the group. It was very interesting. So anyway, when we were kids and we'd go to Montreal, um, and, and more, even more so when I was in high school, because I had taken some art courses and learned about the group of seven, it was magic to be able to go into their home and see all these amazing paintings that they had hanging on their wall. They had um, uh, original sketches and original paintings from A.Y. Jackson, Lauren Harris, uh, Frederick Varley, Kathleen Daly, Arthur Pepper, and Emily Carr, and especially Emily Carr, because as you're going to find out, they had a uh, a close relationship with their family with Emily Carr. Um, this, uh, this, sorry, and I'm just going to go back up for one sec. So that, well, the cover of that book, that's Tom Daly. He was also a very successful um, producer for the National Film Board of Canada and very well known and well respected um, and a huge part of making the National Film Board of Canada the success it was in Canada in the day. Um, so anyway, this, this was a, a book that was written about him by one of his peers. And this, this painting is by Frederick Barley. And in this painting, that is my Uncle Tom. So um, this painting was done, the sitting was done because they were friends and he did this family portrait for them. Um, quick note, when I was uh, about in my 20s, I was in Toronto. My dad was having some surgery. So while I had some time away, I went to the Ontario Art Gallery. And they always have, you know, a lot of works um, in the art gallery from the group of seven, but particularly at this time, they had an extra showing because this painting isn't always there. So I had seen, I knew this painting existed. I had seen it in this book. So I was walking through the art gallery and all of a sudden I walked and it was on an easel in the middle of the floor about this big. And I walked up and voila, <laughs> in full color, there's my uncle. And I'm like all by myself and I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at people going, um, that's, that's my uncle. <laughs> it was a very proud moment. So, um, so also um, Uncle Tom's aunt. So it was his um, father's sister was was Kathleen Francis Daly. And I don't know if many many of you know who Kath, um, Kathleen was, but I want to mention her because um, she was a real pioneer for women for as a woman painter um, in her day, uh, both for her art and um, having her art as a career. Um, and also for her in, um, for her true representation of Indigenous peoples. Um, at the time, and not, not of a lot of artists were painting indig Indigenous people, um, and if they were, they often painted them in a bit of a shade or a light for what the, how the government saw um, uh, uh, Indigenous people at the time. But Kathleen was ahead of her time, and they, her and her husband, George Pepper, actually lived with indigenous peoples and she painted she she um she painted their she 
represented them and painted them for who they were and showed their culture and showed their love and showed their family ties. And if you read up about her now, you can see introspectively or as people write about her, how much respect there is now for the fact that she did that in a time where really that could have actually made her be um, not as, as um, it could have even affected her, how, how people saw her paintings. That thing in the basement. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, they had all, my aunt and uncle had a lot of artwork in their home. Well, as they, they both passed away, now they're gone. I, and I don't remember if, if this incident happened while my uncle Tom was still alive, or maybe he was, um, might have been in a home and, uh, but anyway, they were in their 90s and, and, and or late 80s and 90s, and they needed to do, to take a good um, thorough look at their uh, artwork in their home and have it all appraised. So they had an appraiser in the home. He was all done. He had gone through all the work. And my cousin Tom, young Tom Jr., says to his mother, yeah, my uncle Tom was not there. So he was either passed away or he was in the home. But he says to his mother, mom, what about that thing in the basement? And she's like, what thing in the basement? She goes, you know, that book. So she go, he goes down and he brings the book out and he shows it to the appraiser. And the appraiser's eyes bulge out of his head. It turned out that this thing in the basement was a missing journal of Emily Carr's that she had done when she was on a cruise with her sister in Alaska. And um, as you know, Emily Carr has, there's a museum, like there's a, a whole entire museum or sorry, art gallery. Is it a museum? Would it be a museum or art gallery? Anyway, it's uh, for her in, in British Columbia, just for her work, just to honor her work and the work that she did in her day. You guys all know, I'm, you, you know, Emily. And um, so anyway, this was, was a big mystery. What had happened to this journal? Was it lost forever? Anyway, so this was a huge discovery. It, it, made, the, it made national news. Um, and uh, it was in fact the original. Apparently they had had it in the basement because my aunt had thought it was a copy. She didn't know that. So I guess um, Emily was very good friends with, um, uh, sorry, Emily's sister, Alice, was very, very good friends with um, uh, my, my uncle's mother. And so when, um, after Emily was gone, she'd passed away. Um, they also had relationship with Emily. I think they were, um, pen pals and so they were close Alice sent this book to them as a gift and so there was a actually got it. Um, there was an inscription and it, it, it actually it, there was the original inscription that that Emily had written I thought I'd taken a picture of it sorry I didn't but um, anyway and then it said to Alice and um, no no so it was from Alice and it was to Kathleen and her husband anyway they thought it was a copy had been put away. So this was a great big discovery. And so they, my aunt and uncle ended up, or my aunt ended up uh, donating it to the National Art Gallery. Um, she, they, they didn't, they had to think about whether they were going to give it to the Emily Carr Art Gallery or to the National. They ended up deciding to go with the National Art Gallery um, because they wanted it more tangible and easier for more people to see. So anyway, the book ended up um, in the gallery. But anyway, there is a printing of this book. And it's, uh, it's just a wonderful, they did a big full page printing of the book and now it's available on Amazon and in bookstores. And uh, anyway, it's just a really neat piece of history and it was very exciting. So um, Emily Carr. So because of my interest in Emily Carr, much to do with this story, um, I was uh, on vacation in Toronto with my husband at one point and we did go to the um, AGO, to the art gallery. And he snuck into the, well, we didn't, didn't sneak in, but uh, afterwards you have to, you know how those places you have to walk through the gift stores to leave, you're not getting out till you see the gift stores. Anyway, he bought me this book and he, he didn't know, he didn't let me know and he gave it to me as a Christmas present. So I'm talking about my influencers because um, I, I uh, so this is a journal. Actually, I have some notebooks. I will read my notes. So this journal of Emily Carr, hundreds of thousands, is a daily journal, journal of Emily Carr, um, and it's uh, from 1927 to 1941. So in this journal, she talks. Uh, she it's just amazing, actually. Anybody who's interested, it's just absolutely amazing because you're reading her talking to herself. 
like her private notes on her painting, on her relationships with with the with her friends who were who were group of seven members, and how they um, were bringing her to Ontario so that she could represent the West in her paintings. But the most important thing that I got from this journal was this woman when she painted, um, she loved God. She absolutely loved God. She lo had a very strong um, Christian, re uh, Christian relationship, and that a lot of the members of the group of seven had a, uh, were, were spiritualists, and I, in a lot of it, she's battling with herself saying, oh, you know, I really want to believe what they ble believe, but I keep coming back to this base that I have, and so she's got this, this spiritual struggle going on, and when she would paint, if her painting did not reflect the glory of God in her painting, if she didn't see God's glory, she would, she would discard the painting and start all over or she would paint no she was sorry she would paint over it so that's why they have a lot of paint some of her paintings were over and um and i really believe and i really want my process in painting to be a spiritual process and i really i learned a lot it like it was a huge eye opener to me to really look for something more than just seeing something and putting it on paper but to to really to, to, to breathe some life and love into your work. And so it was a, a big revelation and a huge influencer as I moved on with my painting. Um, growing up, uh, so I, I didn't do any painting. So understand I have done no artwork um, from since high school. I have done no artwork until just five years ago, but I always had it in my heart. Um, so the, so my influences are pretty small because really the, um, I had the Emily or Evelyn Comrade, uh, she's from Thunder Bay, and these are just a grouping of her paintings, you know, a little snapshot from, from uh, the internet, but I saw these paintings growing up all over the city, in galleries, in people's homes, um, you know, in public places, and I always looked at her paintings and thought, they are so beautiful, and I, I can do that someday. I would look at her work and say, yes, I want to do that. So Evelyn's paintings were an influence on me where I fell in love with watercolor. When I was older, in my 20s, 30s, I fell in love with the work of Steve Hanks. Uh, I only ever saw his, I, I think somebody had a book, a uh, coffee table book, because there wasn't even the internet when I first, and um, so again, something stirring inside me that, wow, that is so beautiful. I want to be able to do that someday. Now, I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be able to achieve, you know, either of these guys, um, their their quality of work, but their but but what they portrayed in their watercolor really inspired me. Um, so as I mentioned, in, as she mentioned in my little bio, or as I mentioned, I had a friend teach me a few lessons. So Janice Bonner, she is a professional painter here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, she has some small successes. This is one of them. Uh, but she took me under her wing. I ran into her in a market one day and we were friends and I told her, I want to start painting to, painting in watercolor. And she said, well, I'm a watercolor paintist and I want to, I want to learn how to be an instructor. <laughs> and so we were a good mix. So um, I went over to her house for, I believe, three, for sure, three nights, maybe four. And she taught me just the basics. She taught me... Um, um, uh, good. So she taught me to buy good paint. She taught me what paper to use. You know, or she got me to onto arches 140 pound or 300. That's all I use now. Um, she taught me about good brushes. She taught me uh, how to use a palette. Um, she taught me about how to use water. She taught me how to draw my my paintings first. She showed me wet on dry. She showed me wet on wet. She showed me washes. She showed me salt. She showed me credit card scraping. And she did all of that in about five weeks. <laughs> well, in four in four four evening lessons of about two hours each. So I'm forever I'm in her debt because that was the that is was what I got for my training, and that is what got me going. Um, during COVID, um, I uh, did meet online a beautiful artist by the name of Tracy Hebert. Hebert, you can um, Google her or look her up on on Facebook. She's from Gatton Rouge. Louisiana. And as I was starting to do some figure painting, um, I private messaged her randomly because I fell in love with one of her figure paintings. I probably should have put that one up. And I started to ask her questions. Well, this woman, we became, she took me under her wing and we have become friends. And she really helped me with um, a, a lot of technique um, as I started to develop my craft. So I owe a lot to her. The Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor. So I'd never heard of it. Um, 
I had bought a calendar in 2020 um, from the Biliana Baker. She's a local Thunder Bay painter as well. Beautiful, light, um, really loose, lovely um, landscape watercolors. And I bought a, a calendar from her. And on the back of the calendar, she wrote all the associations she was with. And the very last thing she wrote was that she was an associate member of the Canadian Society Society of Painters and Watercolor. And I'm like, oh, well, what is that? So I Googled you. <laughs> and when I Googled you, I read all about, you know, being a member, becoming an elected member, being an associate member. I looked at you guys, uh, you, there was a few education programs going at the time. And this is during COVID when we were in lockdown, where we all had lots of time, you know, at, uh, in our studios. So, uh, so I immediately became an associate member. And there was not much turning back. Um, I, uh, uh, I started with um, the education program. I, um, I think I did maybe one workshop or one streaming and an email came out um, to the membership and associate membership group that they were needing help. <laughs> they, were, they were putting on all these programs and they needed some help. They needed some people to help who had technical computer skills and needed to help moderate. Well, I was like a sponge. I was so excited to be learning from this, you know, so excited to be a part of this society. And now I had technical skills. So I emailed back and said I would be happy to, to be a part. And so that was, I don't, I think it was in the spring of 2019, I think. And now I'm a part of this group. I'm on the education committee with these wonderful ladies. And we work very hard um, to put on the education programs that you're seeing um, coming in your emails and that are going on. And I, I believe probably, you know, you're probably taking a part in a lot of them. And, and Marlene, you, were, you did the fireside chat, which I loved, you know, last year. So anyway, so again, influencers, the Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor is, has become one of my bigger influencers because I am continuing to learn. It's offering me some continued education um, and opening my eyes to all different kinds of styles and, and also helping me learn about the artist community in Canada and beyond, right? I mean, I, I, if, when you're, if you're on the internet and you get plugged into um, watercolor groups, you're getting an a, a international education. Being a part of this society, you are really learning some grassroots stuff. You're learning about Canadian artists and, and the people who are who are active and, you know, all of you, you know, Anita, what, you know, with what you're doing with your art, like just amazing. So anyway, I, I can't say enough. And so Pat, you're, you're here on a good day. Okay. This is, this is, you'll, you'll learn so much. I can't say enough about being an associate. It's, um, it's really branching me out and I'm learning so much. It's good it's to hear. Really, yeah. That's and good it's to hear. nominal, nominal price. It's not expensive either. It's not going to break the bank. Right. Okay. So. Uh, humble beginnings. Um, after Janice, I did do one uh, evening um, lesson with a local artist who was teaching um, about grading, grading and washes. So that was like a two-hour evening. So I did get a little extra tutelage, um, and that helped me because because the like bringing paints into other colors and everything was uh, was good. It was something I needed to learn. So. 2017, 2018, um, uh, these are some of my very, very first paintings. The pumpkin was the very first painting that I did with Janice. And then the second painting I did with Janice was the water, was the, um, the water pump. That's actually, and all, by the way, all of my paintings are pretty much, I would say 95% are all from my photos. Um, so anyway, the water pump, it was a neat, this one down here, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but this, it's, it's not technically correct because this painting was just about teaching me a bunch of techniques. So the sky, she taught me about wet and wet, you know, the, 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 the um, land back there, she showed me how to scrape with a credit card to, you know, with, to make all these effects. Uh, Linda, you'll appreciate in the front, I <laughs> tried a little bit of negative painting, right? The water pump, she taught me about, you know, wet and dry and, and grabbing that light. So this was a, a bit of lessons. And then after that, away I went. So um, first uh, I was, I worked on some of my ski, seascapes or in Northern Ontario, we call them lakescapes. <laughs> um, on uh, Lake Superior, for any of you who don't know, is the largest, is 
Thunder Bay is situated on Lake Superior, which is the largest lake in uh, freshwater lake in the world. And it is absolutely beautiful. On the North Shore, it's very rugged, many islands. And we sailed those islands on that North Shore for, for over 15 years. And um, it's, uh, it's like having an ocean in the middle of the continent. So I had a lot of fun with having, and I will continue to have a lot of fun. And remember, um, Evelyn's influence on me when I started to think I was going to do watercolor painting, I only saw myself doing landscapes. That was the only, I never thought for a second I would ever do paint a person, but which I ended up doing as you'll see. But um, anyway, so landscapes was my heart. Landscapes is what, or what I wanted to do or seascapes in my case. So this was my very first. I also show you at the end here, I'll show you the source photo. I think it's fun to see. I think it's neat to see progress pictures too. So I'm going to show you guys all sort of a couple progress and then the final. So this was a bay uh, at the end of our peninsula, the Sleeping Giant Peninsula. That's our boat, Phantom. Phantom is also featured in is the featured boat on the book cover, by the way. <laughs> when you paint something for somebody, you get to use your own references. By the way, if anybody wants to butt in or have questions or say anything, please feel free. Um, so this is this is uh, uh, was a neat experiment because first off my source photo was going the other way, so I used an, a photo editing program and I inverted it beca because I also if you look at my source photo it didn't have the sleeping giant so I don't know if many of you are familiar with the sleeping giant but you see this body of land back here if you look carefully it's, it should look like a man lying flat on his back and it's quite a famous Peninsula famous um, uh, viewing here for Thunder Bay, the, the Sleeping Giant. So I decided to add the Sleeping Giant in it. It was the first time, but it will not be the last. Um, uh, anyway, so I, when I decided that I wanted the Sleeping Giant in there, I decided the boats needed to sail away from them because just for a better balance of the of the painting. So then during the COVID lockdown, April 2020, this was my very, very first painting of people. Uh, we couldn't see our grandchildren. You guys know how heartbreaking and how hard it was on all of us to be locked away and to not see our loved ones or not see people. And uh, so I decided if I can't see my grandchildren, then I'm going to paint them. So I had this, uh, this photo that uh, I just thought would be perfect. I put this painting on, Facebook after it was done and it went I don't know if it went viral but it had over over thousand likes and hits and loves and comments hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments and um, it was very emotional because um, people weren't responding necessarily to the quality of the work I mean it's lovely but it was the, it was the, a painting of the time right we were it was a painting of what we were going through and how difficult it was. So, so this was a, a big hitter for me, and especially because uh, I liked painting the people. So from there, I decided to. Um, oh, and one other thing about this painting, I submitted it for a contest for um, um, M MP Honorable Patty Hydu. If you all recognize her, she was the Minister of Health at that time during the pandemic and you would have seen her a lot on the news. She's also a schoolmate of mine and a, um, a friend of mine. But anyway, this, this uh, I submitted in this, this, it was a random draw. Apparently they didn't judge the paintings. It was just they picked painting. So my painting ended up in her calendar for 2021, which was uh, my, my sort of my first little success as an artist. Oh, I just have to, my, my presentation was so big. How do I get out? Where's my escape button? There we go. My presentation was so big I had to break it in two. <laughs> okay. So that was my first painting with people. That was it. I was in. I was hooked. I have 11 grandchildren, as you saw, to motivate me. So I decided to start trying to paint my grandchildren. So this is my little granddaughter Evelyn. She was my very first figure painting. Uh, it was nervous. I was nervous to do this to, to paint a, a person. Um, and this was the very first time that I got a little help from my friend Tracy Hebert from 
Baton Rouge. So anyway, I loved how it turned out. I got a lot of beautiful comments, a lot of, you know, people really, um, and remember, this is, I'm only three years, to, well, I started at the end of 2017, so I'm really only two years into my artist journey at this point. So um, I'm, I'm really, I'm liking, I'm going to be honest, I'm liking the attention. People are really, wow, keep going, keep going. And so I did, I listened to people. And this is all during lockdown as well. So everything, all the way you're sharing is all social media. I probably did more social media sharing because it was in lockdown than I would have normally. And I've got a lot more, um, I think I got a lot more feedback because of that as well. So this was uh, my next figure. This was little James sleeping in his crib. So learning glazes, learning to go deeper to get the skin tones, you know, I don't know anybody who, if anybody paint, does figure painting, but um, it takes a lot, like the way I'm painting, I'm using washes. So it takes a lot of washes and, and glazes, I guess you would call them glazes to um, try to get to achieve some of the, and, and you'll notice like I'm really, I'm, I don't want my paintings to look like photos, just so we're clear. I do not want to be a photo realist painter, but I do want to, but I do just seem to naturally be, to be uh, drawn to, to painting, painting realistically. So, um, so I want to find that really nice medium where I have my paintings look like the, you know, proportions are good and they look real, but yet they're, I'm tr I want to learn to try to find um, also where, where you can uh, allow some looseness and some impressionism in on the paintings as well. So I'm really searching for my style. I'm still learning um, uh, for, uh, this is probably a really good, um, uh, my, my talk is probably a good talk for, for people who are in their learning stage and still seeking because you don't learn right away, right? Um, I mean, maybe some people don't know right away, but I know that I'm still looking for my groove. This is Brinley. Brinley, uh, I don't think her mother was <laughs> too happy with her hair. I think I painted her hair a little too red. Um, and that's sort of because I love love red hair. But and you'll see why I have more family members that are redheads. So this is uh, Lori and Amelia. All my all just photos of mine that I that I loved and I just thought would and you'll notice um, my photos are all life moments. I'm not doing portraits. I'm doing figures and life moments. I have no interest in doing por portrait painting. I think if people want a portrait, they can get a really nice one from a, either a portrait painter or a photographer. That, that is not something I'll ever lean towards, personally. I want to see that artistic side. Um, this is cute little Lachlan and Ellie. Ellie, my namesake, she's uh, Elizabeth. Mayberry and I'm Ellen Elizabeth. So this is, and I believe her mother's here somewhere. Alex, are you here? If you wave, I don't know if anybody can see you. Um, so anyway, this one I, I this one I rushed. So these paintings, as I was doing them, they were all in the fall of 2021, and I believe 2021. Yes, in the fall of 2021. And what happened was once I painted Evelyn and then I painted a couple more, um, I thought, you know what? I'm going to paint them all for Christmas. I'm going to paint them all a, a painting of their kids for Christmas. And I did it. I managed to get all these these figure portraits that you've done. I did them all in like a matter of three months. And I gave them as Christmas presents and they were really a blessing. But I, as I look back now, in hindsight, I see that I could have spent, um, I could have easily, if you look at the source photo and you look at this photo, I could have easily spent a little more time um, going a little deeper um, with this. And that's one of the things you learn, especially when you put the photo reference up next to it. Uh, this is my beautiful daughter, Alex and Ellie, when she was a baby. Um, I had a, a lot of love and a lot of, um, this was, this, this painting I worked really hard to try to get that those skin tones right and you know to get to get that beautiful love I, I I really wanted to evoke the love that Alex was expressing as she snuggled with that little baby and and I hope I captured it um that little squishy face <laughs> it's funny when you're painting figures um and you're painting these skin tones you feel like oh my gosh that's so dark what have I done? It's so dark. It's so dark. 
And then when you put it up next to the photo, you're like, oh, it's not dark at all. It's still really light. So the, all the tones and, and, and bringing tones into a painting, it's, it's, a, it's a real process and it's a real learning process. And it takes, you have to be brave. Like Tracy had to push me on some of these paintings and say, Ellen, just be brave. Don't quit. It's not done yet. Don't just be brave. Put, do another wash, do another glaze. You'll be happy. And when I did, I'd be, wow, what I, look at what I would have missed if I hadn't pushed myself and, and taken that next step and done another glaze to go a little darker. So this painting is uh, a very important painting to me because I'm finally at this point starting, I had a good force source photo to help me, but I'm finally trying to grasp light in my painting because um, I didn't really, I, nobody told me about light in watercolor. <laughs> so I'm learning just by watching all of you. I'm learning by, by watching the um, educational workshops and the videos. I'm learning how important light is in watercolor. And so this was my first painting where I really uh, used and brought light. And so just going forward as an artist, this is one of my goals is to learn and to experience more light and figure out not just the light source, but how to um, bring the light in so that it shines, so your paintings truly shine. Um, so anyway, that's my next steps. So this is Olivia and her daddy, Dawn. Uh, my sister lost her husband about 20 years ago. My sister Jan lost her husband, Stan, my wonderful brother-in-law. So she brought a photo to me and she said, this is after I'd done these other figures. And she said, would you paint my favorite picture of Stan? And I was a little nervous about that because Stan's gone. And so this is something, it's a tribute. It's gonna, this painting's gonna mean something to her. And you, you really, I really felt like you had to get it right, you know? Um, I will mention too, I haven't mentioned, uh, I do a mix, I do some tracing um, in for when I do my figures because I do trace the outline because I want to ensure I get the proportions right. So you'll notice that my, Paintings are very close to the source photos. It's because I do use um, a tracing um, system um, just to ensure I get proportions right. Because I know from experience, and I just know if you paint a picture of somebody and their shoulders are way down here and their heads way up here, and and you know it could be a beautiful painting, but if it's just off, they're they're not going to like it, right? So, and I'm not going to like it. So I do use a tracing system for the portion, but all of my details um, for, for the most part are all painted. I mean, you can't draw all of these details. So I, I've heard painters say that you actually draw with paint. It's actually called drawing when you're doing that kind of detail. And, uh, and I love it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just drawn to it. I love it. And, uh, and she ended up loving this painting of Stan. So, and this painting was really dark, you know, it was from 25 years ago that the painting was taken and it didn't, you know, so I, I, I brightened it up a little bit, but I probably could have gone a little darker in the background, but again, all learning processes. Backgrounds are, that is a big learning curve for me. I have to learn how to do backgrounds. Backgrounds are tricky. So this is Michael with um, his, with his, uh, his little girl. Um, I'm not her name is Grace. I'm sorry. See, I have too many grandchildren and I'm over 50, so I don't even remember my own grandkids' names. Uh, this is Grace. Um, so this painting uh, was a lot of fun and was a challenge. So the challenges for me here uh, was trying to get the right depth of perception with this couch, right? So that that back arm didn't look like it was like right beside the, you know, you want to create depth. And, and so that was uh, um, something I had to work on. And then as well to do Michael's hair, um, if you look at his uh, the source photo, um, his hair is very specific and I really wanted to do justice to his hair um, as well. This is really funny. Um, I don't have any pictures of my husband, sorry about that, but this looks like my husband holding this baby because my husband has white hair and a goatee <laughs> and I haven't painted Michael's whole beard. So I show this, this picture to a lot of people at this stage of the painting. I say, look, does that not look like Bill? Or people say, oh, is that Bill? Which is my husband, because this is his son. So it just shows the amazing resemblance that that is there. And then when I add his features, voila, it turns into Michael. It doesn't look like Bill anymore, right? So anyway, so there's the 
the starting of his hair and the couch and trying and getting that depth and there's the final painting and I, I liked it I, I felt like I feel like I didn't finish Grace enough that I probably worked a, so much on Michael that Grace maybe could have had a little more attention uh, but again Christmas deadline I had to get them out Okay, so that was it for my little Christmas present. So then I decided to be brave. And honestly, um, as a new artist, um, I had not I had not painted any paintings of where eyes are looking at, at the camera. As I said, I didn't want to do portraits. So I decided if I'm going to paint some eyes and paint a portrait, it's going to be of me. So if I mess it up, I'm only messing up myself. So this was a big step to do a, <laughs> a self-portrait. So I did draw a lot more detail. Like draw, so I did my my I I did it uh did, I you know I might not have traced this one because my shoulders yeah I I don't think I traced this one because I wasn't happy with I ended up with my shoulders a bit too high exactly what I was talking about before um and I actually ended up cropping out a whole bunch of my shoulders on this painting um because they were too long they were too wide they were too high so when I cropped the painting for for you or for whenever I posted it, I just kind of cropped those shoulders out. Anyway, I drew a lot more detail for this because I was, I didn't know if I could paint it with justice, but so then began the paint. I also had a lot of fun trying to be a little bit impressionistic or a little more artsy with this by, um, as you saw by, by, by painting the blues and the purples on the eyes and the, sh the doing my doing my um, uh, um, my shadows in like green and and purple or not just purple or or beige like adding these greens and yellows and kind of and I love it I learned a lot about this about tones and I want to in the future have some fun with that where you take um, totally different colors but they're the they're the same tones as the real colors and how you can like I think um, Jean Pedersen does a lot of that and I admire her work for, for the kind of work she does with that kind of stuff. So that was a source photo there. You can see my face is narrower in the photo than in my drawing, but. Okay, um, my sister Phyllis, I think she's here. Hi Phyllis, if you're here. She turned 60. Um, uh, she's a beautiful spiritual lady and uh, she's involved in um, a spiritual dance, Dance of the Tara. And she was turning 60. I wanted to honor her and I wanted to paint a picture that showed the beauty that I feel for my sister, the love and beauty that I see for, for her and the beauty that I see in the spiritual life that she lives and she encompasses. So I showed you the painting first on this one because I didn't have a photo to paint this. So this was fun. So I this was this shows Phyllis's hair, her bright, bright red hair and the light in her hair. I didn't quite achieve those yellows like I would have liked to. I didn't manage to have a proper light for, source for the because it was an indoor painting. So and this shows how long her hair was. If she turns around, her hair was actually down to her butt at that time, just like in the painting. So what I did is I asked her her daughter <laughs> to sneak into her closet and to scoop her dancing dress. And um, Phyllis's husband had snuck a picture when she was dancing of the pose I wanted, a few poses. So I sent my niece the pose and I said, can you go into her closet and put her dress on and get, get Fred to take a picture? So she didn't get Fred to take a picture. She set a tripod up and she took these pictures for me for, source, for a source photo. And it was just fabulous. So we had a lot of fun conspiring. And then this was the painting and I had it framed and I, or no, I didn't have it framed. I just, she lived in Scarborough at the time. So I had it sent by mail, had it wrapped and sent by mail. She arrived right on her birthday. And uh, my niece actually videoed her getting this painting and she loved it. So this is a very special painting. And it's also, um, for me, it's a, a hope and a, a desire of, of being able to not just be so realistic, but to be able to take, take stuff and, and do things that are a little more um, impressionistic as I grow. Um, I have done very few animals. I've did this lovely um, uh, gray herring, blue heron, sorry. This was a, a, a source photo was from as well Lake Superior, one of our boating trips. So this was, I did, Linda, you'll notice a little negative painting up in the corner, playing with my negative painting on my own this time. Um, playing with water, you know, because the water wasn't blue. Or, or no, sorry, I changed the water because I didn't want to paint all those rocks. If you look at the source photo, there's all those rocks. So I actually found a different water picture on the internet and used that for my water. 
Um, my next painting was my grand dogs. Uh, my, this was my very first commission uh, and it was an intentional commission by my, by my um, daughter-in-law. She said, Ellen, I would like you to do a commission for me and you're, you, are, I'm, you are going to charge me and you're going to tell you're going to charge me what you think it's your time is worth. You need to learn what your paintings are worth, right? You need to learn and the value of your paintings. And uh, I said, well, I can't do that. I'll, you know, and she said, well, you can just apply the family discount. She's a lawyer, so she always, you know, we get the family discount, which is a big discount. So she says, you can apply the family discount after, but I want to teach you to um, to to value to, to find value in your work. So I never painted an animal at all. So I did do uh, paid like twenty dollars to to go through this Rebecca Rhodes online video tutorial. She does all kinds of videos for animals. So I did uh, watch her video. I didn't paint her video, but I watched her video and then I applied uh, some of the techniques that I learned from her to my own puppies. So these are my grand dogs. This is Quinny on the left and, and Relic on the right. And Relic's not with us anymore. So all the more that this painting means to, to this family. Um, so anyway, a lot of fun. The way that I the way that um, I painted these dogs, watching them come to life on your on the paper was exciting. It was like oh, I actually took a lot of. This was probably one of the paintings I took the mo most um, process pictures of um, because it was just it was so exciting to watch them come to life. So here's the final painting, and she loved it, and it sits proudly in her office um, at her law office here in Thunder Bay. Um, this painting was also very special. It was um, my sister-in-law, Sherry's 60th birthday, and it was COVID. And it was, as you know, so hard on all of us. And I wanted to do, you know, 60th birthday, we can't have a party, can't even see her. We did have Zoom drinks, you know, on the day of her birthday. We did have Zoom, a little Zoom party, but uh, not the same, right? 60th birthday, she would like to have celebrated with her family. So I set out to do something special. So this is a photo that I actually took. I was actually kayaking behind her when I took this, this picture. Um, uh, what is neat is that this, um, this picture, the, the, the um, source photo, the water was actually brown because a lot of water, uh, a lot of part, a lot, some parts of Lake Superior are rock bottom and have limestone and you'll see green water. Some parts of our lake are all mud bottom, right? So this was an area, their beach was actually mud bottom. So the, all the water was brown, it was not blue. So I actually took, again, used a photo edit editor and I changed the source photo and I was able to change that water to this brilliant blue and that's what I painted this painting from. So this picture also was posted during COVID, during lockdown. And this painting, I had, I think over 3000 likes on, like people loved it, they went crazy. And I think when you see it, um, especially when you see it in a smaller feed on like Facebook, it looked, it looked um, the deep, you know what it's like when you look at a painting from farther away, it can look better. <laughs> so anyway, this was a big boost to my confidence and uh, a really uh, a pleasure painting water, having so much fun with the spirals and the, the way the water's moving. And, and also this was a painting where I tried to experience the, the light a little better. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ellen, I'm going to interrupt you for a moment. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, it is now very, very close to 10 o'clock for anyone who has other appointments or if they need to leave, oh. but just so that you know where we're, where we're at with this. Thoroughly enjoying your journey, so. Okay, I'll, I'll zip through to the book cover then. So I was, I'm almost there anyway. I think we started late too because I had timed this. Ah, sorry, I probably talked too much. I would say, um, Ellen, just continue on with your presentation. Those who leave will leave. I'm going okay. to record your entire presentation. So it's not a problem on my end, just for everyone else. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and I am almost done. But anyway, so this um, this painting here uh, is um, I, I painted for my girlfriend. Every painting I paint, I give away, as you can see. Uh, this was her grandchildren. It was her 50th birthday. We've been friends since we were four years old, and she was just blown away by this gift. But I wanted to show you this is a little trick that I'm, I do, and I, I'm learning to help me to get my values. Um, I'll take a picture of the painting where it's at, and Google uh, Photos is amazing. It literally refreshes from my phone to Google Photos within one minute. 
So then I can bring it up on Google Photos. I can bring the source picture on my, my computer beside it and I can compare the values and it really helps me to know whether I'm done or not. And again, like I said, I don't want to go as deep as a photo, um, but I do want to get close, especially on those kids. So um, this just shows how I'm able to really look at the blue in him and the blue you know, in the photo, okay, look, I, I could go way, I could have gone way deeper if I wanted to look this to look just like the photo. But nonetheless, it helps me to not quit the painting too early. And I didn't, this is a newer trick, something I've just started within the last year. And so when you look at the other paintings I had done earlier, you could see if I would have been doing this, I could have maybe gone a little deeper with those kids on the wall. You know, I didn't know to do that, to do that comparison. So that was a good thing that I learned. This painting is actually um, one of the paintings that will be critiqued um, this evening um, for the, the um, critique that's going on with the Canadian Society of Watercolors. Um, yes, it, it was one of the paintings that was selected and I knew, like my background is, I, I haven't been, I'm trying not to be hard on myself, but <laughs> my background in this painting is trash and I knew that, but I love the figures. So I actually purposely submitted a painting that I, where I, I know that there's lots for me to learn and lots for me to grow from, and I know that they'll probably pick on that background, but that's okay. Uh, I want to learn, right? Um, this is my last painting before the book cover. This was my sister-in-law. I wanted to show you the finished painting first before I showed you the process picks, because the process picks are a little ugly, because with I haven't really learned how to do, I, I've learned to leave some white in painting, but not all. So I did use some masking for me for, for the water in this painting. So you'll notice, you can see the yellow where I snuck wet, um, the masking on to try to reserve some of the whites. I don't want this, I really wanna learn from people like Poppy Glazer, um, uh, how to preserve and to, to keep the whites, but I'm not there yet. So this was my process, but I'm looking forward to learning from her uh, rocks and spray uh, streaming video that she has right now. I'm super excited to be able to try to learn some steps so that I don't have to do all this masking. I don't love using masking, but I don't know what else to do. I also use masking in her hair. So then there, that shows you with the masking, that shows you the, the final painting. And again, lots of pushing to go deeper, deeper, like how many times did I have to make myself go back to that hat and the shadow in the hat? And I still see that I could have gone so much darker, right, to get that shading. So now my book cover. So here we are, um, 2022. My friend Marianne, uh, well, uh, friend, uh, yes, she's a, an author of eight books here in Thunder Bay, and she's been watching my artist journey. And so she approached me. She actually approached me, I think, last fall and said, I'm writing a book. Will you paint the cover? And then she officially approached me this year. And uh, so I was a little nervous. You know, that's a big challenge to, to paint somebody else's vision um, for me was a, something brand new and something, you know, totally thinking outside of the box, doing something different. So I said yes. So again, when you're the, the name of the book was Death on the Water. So I had to um, I had to f figure out, you know, where I'm going to. Um, draw my uh, like I, I I can't just draw from nothing I mean I probably can but I think it's just so much better if I have a source so I found this lovely coast of, uh, of Lake Superior this is what the coastline of Lake Superior the rugged coastline looks like up here in, in Thunder Bay area on the rocky parts we do have beaches as well but the rocky parts look just like this so I picked this for my coastline because I thought it showed little coves how a boat could be hidden because they couldn't see the boat because it was in a cove and um, so this is uh, Phantom. This was the boat that I chose to use um, for I, to just to be able to draw from to draw the boat in the picture. And then there was the dead guy. <laughs> Did any does anybody have a source for me? <laughs> I'm drawing a dead guy floating in the water. So it's like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do that? So it's kind of funny. I thought if anybody looked at my Google searches that month, I might have gotten in trouble. The police might have been all over me. Why is she, you know, I'm glad my husband stayed safe. <laughs> I didn't have to be investigated. Anyway, this was what I ended up kind of finding. There was a few that I found. I, I managed to actually realize I could search dead man's float. Do you remember that when you were kids, kids doing the dead man's float? So that was a safer way to, to, to Google bodies floating in the water. So uh, my very first value sketch. 
So this is something I had never done. I had never done any pre-drawings, any value sketches, didn't know anything about them until I started to learn from the painters in the society from some of the educational programs. So I stepped out and did my first value sketch. Did a few different drawings, you know, um, trying to understand my placement, you know, how I wanted to place stuff. So <clears throat> that was all new to me doing these extras. So and then I actually did a value painting as well. So here's the thing. Show her the value painting and oh, she didn't like it. <laughs> and she told me I could do anything I wanted. And I was like, it wasn't that she didn't like it, but it turned out she wanted this to be much bigger. But I had pictured it being subtle, you know, so they look at the cover and they, oh, if they look carefully, they see the body. And then she says to me, no, no, I want to see the body. I want, when people look at that cover, I want them to see that body beside the boat. So I had to like change my vision. And so that was in the spring and summer was coming. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't plan, I don't plan air paint yet. So I don't paint in the summer. In Thunder Bay, summers are super short. So when it's nice out and you have all these grandkids and you have a pool in your backyard and you need to get your exercise, you're not painting. You're just not inside. You're outside, right? So uh, anyway, I put it away. So she didn't need to publish the book till the fall. So I just put it away and I didn't touch it until last month. And then I managed to figure out how to make the boat bigger. And that's actually my my tracing sheet. You can see how it's I used it to trace onto the drawing. There is my preliminary drawing. Then I started to paint the beautiful coastline. And voila, the finished. And she loved it. She absolutely loved it. And also, um, I paint I decided to do a, like the painting this way for her so that we would it would wrap around the book. And as it turned out, it worked out perfectly. There's the cover, there's the back, so there's the back of the painting. And even on the spine, there was no paint there. So she didn't have to put, she didn't have to cover the spine to put her work, you know, the side words. So it worked out really well. I actually have a copy of the book here. I'm not really happy with the publisher. They, they, they lost my whites. So I've challenged her to um, try to get them. She hasn't ordered the full set yet. She's going to order, you know, 200 books or whatever for her, her release. And uh, I told her she needs to challenge the publisher to bring the whites up. Like, there's no whites in this. I was so disappointed. You know, it's all gray. So I don't know if you guys know anything about publishing. But anyway, very exciting. So what's next for me? Um, I'm going to not do tutorials. I'm going to take tutorials. So I'm going to watch tutorials and learn, learn, learn. Take some time for me. I'm going to try not to paint paintings for other people for a while and just paint and learn. Um, I want to do some practice. I want to find light and put it into my paintings. I want to learn how to be a little looser as well. And I want to love what I'm doing. So I have 25 years of photo reference to draw from, 11 grandchildren growing, playing, and being adorable. And I have many more adventures in, in, in Thunder Bay and Northwestern Ontario and Canada and the world where I'll be able to take great pictures and, and paint more paintings. So I'm excited. So here's just a few fun, that's not the ocean, that's Lake Superior <laughs> paintings in my repertoire that, you know, are in my to be painted paintings. There's beautiful sleeping giant. So <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Ellen. We do have a couple of comments in uh, the chat area. Okay. I'll just go up. Um, such a neat, such a neat journey. I love the family history. That was from Alex. Oh, good. Yay. And Marlene wrote, George Pepper was a CSPWC member 1947 to 1961. Kathleen Daly's husband. He was an official yes. war artist. Yes. Yes. I didn't. You're right. I didn't. They didn't have any paintings of of George's in their home. In my notes, I mentioned George, but I didn't want to, I knew I was running late, so I dropped George off. But I did have some notes on George. Uh, yes, George was um, uh, 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 quite well well known. And they they dedicated their lives as a couple to painting. Yes, yes wow. very yeah. amazing. And Marlene, my cousin, because they didn't have children, and my cousin has all their letters 
all their letters that they wrote to each other when they weren't together and letters that they wrote to other people so the next wow. time I go the next time I go to Montreal we're gonna he's gonna and he's also got a bunch of her paintings and oh there was one thing I wanted to mention actually if you give if you'll allow me um so when when uh when Kathleen died she donated to over 2,200 paintings to um public art galleries um um because she, like um that's how she wanted them to, to, to be displayed but apparently after afterwards um many of the art galleries ended up putting them up on auction and selling many of them which was what she didn't want to have happen so that's kind of sad that yeah. she had wanted them to be you know and they ended up going into private collections anyway so okay thank you and then here's another note from alex this says i love them all but especially mike so Mike must be her husband. Uh, Mike, so Mike, Mike, the um, the my um, son with the beard. He mm -hmm. likes Mike. Yes, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I loved Mike's hair. <laughs> yeah. I loved my, painting Mike's head. Yeah, his hair. So thank you, thank you very much. Who said that one? Uh, no, that was Alex. Alex, thank you, Alex. And then from Phyllis, I recognize my daughter's arms. I think that was when you did your sister. <laughs> Oh, come on, you're twins. You're twins. Is she here? Is she still here? Is she gone? I'm not sure. I think okay. I think she's gone. Okay. I'm here. Oh, she's here. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Linda Kemp says, your enthusiasm for painting and family is a joy. And I agree. But Thank you, Linda. Yeah. Then Tina Price, superb dogs. Great to see the evolution of your painting journey. Again, yes. spot on. And then uh, let's see, uh, Pat Duin. Sorry, I do I do have to run. Thank you everyone for allowing me to join today. I'm sure I will continue our association. Thank you, Pat. So that's Good. a new Good. member coming in. Mm -hmm. And then um, Sue Langley. Thanks, Ellen. Interesting journey and encouraging for all of us who strive to matter, strive to master watercolor. Yay. Good. I love see personally, I just love seeing your journey like that and your you know process pictures too. Uh, Thank you. love your enthusiasm, your organization, and your attitude. All the best on your painting journey. Great progress so far. And that is from Tina Price. Nice. Thank you, Tina. Let's see. I think we have no, that is it for the messages. I am going to stop the recording, but does anyone have any questions for Ellen? Oh, maybe I'll leave the court recording on for this too. I, I just can wanted. Go, can you take uh, um, can you take us off spotlight so I can see everybody? Sure. Oh, and I just wanted to also say about the Pepper Daly family. They, I think they had a uh, lived at the studio building in. Uh, Seventeen uh, years they lived there. So it's it's actually amazing. one of my pet projects is researching who's been in the studio building. Yes, so I could we could probably link yeah. up. Yeah, we can. I have a lot of information. So yes, they were there for seventeen years. Wonderful. Yes, and I actually I mentioned that in my notes, but I, I knew I was running short. But and I was I didn't know if you were going to be here. So in my notes, I had mentioned that it was Marlene had talked about the studio building in the fireside chat, and that was such a neat connection. So mm -hmm. and I'm I'm really I'm I would really like to learn more about uh, both Kathleen and George, but specifically Kathleen. I want to learn so much more about her journey. Um, if there's more, especially with the letters, what we might be able to, because like reading the Emily Carr journals, you learn what's in their heart when they're painting. You you read like firsthand what they're thinking when they're they're doing these works, right? So I'm wondering if we'll be able to draw some that kind of information from those letters, right? Yes, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And I think we should keep in mind that when you do study more and find out more about the history, that we might have you back as a speaker to give us an update <laughs> yeah. on all that. Yeah, that'd be Any fun. other questions for Ellen? Not, not a question, but uh, thank you for your uh, for outlining your journey, uh, uh, Ellen. It was particularly enlightening, and uh, particularly the background uh, with the society in the in the mm. early days and the personalities. Mm. And interesting, you talk about uh, portraits and portraying people. I'm working on a number of pieces right now that portray people and uh, and how challenging it can be to to uh, to get the, the the right tone 
or the various tones in the in the face <laughs> and uh, and the colors and try to represent uh, them. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a challenge and uh, also like you have to always push one step further than what you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, like, like yeah, because it never. Yeah. It's going down too dark. But when it dries, it's not dark enough, and you have to go in again <laughs> another tone. And uh, yeah. yeah, so thank yeah. you for sharing your your story and journey with us. Thank One you. thing I that I noticed it. too, when you were talking about the values on your painting and how you thought it was too dark, and then you put the picture against it, and it wasn't. And one yeah. thing that, like I've been teaching watercolors for 22 years now, and one thing I find that if you're just working on the main element and not the background, you're judging everything against the white of that paper. So it's right. kind of nice to bounce around too. So bring your values in. It's, it's a whole painting process. But right. one thing I noticed too about your paintings, and as I was looking at them, I thought your material and how you're painting them are very marketable. Are very what? Marketable. Oh. Your oh, figures wow. and everything. Um, I think they can draw anyone in who doesn't even know these people and it's just filled it your paintings look like they're filled with love and emotion and that comes through Yay. and that's very successful so and that is and as I mentioned right in the beginning right from the start that's my my goal and my heart is to paint for my heart to not just color I don't want to be a I don't I don't want to color a coloring book you know I want to I want to create something alive and something that that goes on when I'm gone I want the paintings to go on and tell my story and tell the story of the people or the places I'm painting 